Welcome in everyone. Thank you for joining a demo of my new game. I appreciate you all being here. Uh, title of my talk, why I talked to myself and how it made me a better developer. So you might be wondering who I am. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about myself here. I'm JD Flynn. I'm a principal Drupal software engineer. I'm a member of the Drupal conflict resolution team of the CWG and I've been doing Drupal for over 10 years. I have a former life as a paramedic, I've been coding since the 80s. And you can follow me on Twitch at Twitch TV plus JD Does Dev. All right, ready? So what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about me talking to myself. And by that, I mean talking while live streaming. When I say live streaming, I don't mean, hey, watch me play this game and do loud reactions, or me in a hot tub, and you're welcome for that. I mean doing development while I'm streaming. So what do I mean by development streaming? I mean this. Live streaming on Twitch, YouTube, or other services while doing, learning, teaching, or talking about development. Quote from a very, very famous person who is not famous at all. Actually, I, I said that. That was me. But why? Why do people do this and why do people watch? Well, I did research, and by research, I mean I came up with a list of why I do it, and I asked some other people why they watch. And I also asked some other people why they do it, just, just so it's not all me. So here are my main reasons. Let's count them down. It helps with real-time problem solving. It's great for community building. Really good about knowledge sharing and accountability. Really helps with my productivity, surprisingly enough. It's been great for networking. And it gives me instant feedback and problem solving and good old-fashioned narcissism. Now, why do people watch? I asked my audience, I asked other uh, audiences in other streams why they watch, and here are the few reasons. Body doubling, so if you're not sure what that is, that's just being around or seeing another person working helps, helps you work. A lot of people do it to support people they know and they like. People do it to share knowledge. Uh, people watch to help others out or to get help, and also networking. So everybody gets something out of it. Now, let's talk about me talking about what I'm doing to nobody but me. Level two, talking to myself. So, surprise, talking through what I was doing made me slow down and better understand problems. I am just as surprised as you were. But it did. It helped. Why? For a few reasons. Help me clarify the problem or the task. Really help me organize my thoughts. Biggest one, it forced me to slow down and analyze what I'm doing. It helped me with problem solving. Quite a bit. When I'm streaming, I try to talk out the problem in a way that that non-tech people can understand. Sometimes it involves drawing something out or um, graphing it, diagramming it, however, or writing it out, uh, just the steps, slowing down and clarifying what I'm trying to accomplish. Sometimes it's just me talking through my thought process, and it helps out a ton. Oh. And by diagramming, drawing, listing out parts of the current task, I'm able to organize my thoughts much more clearly. So I, I almost create a roadmap of what I'm trying to do. It is tremendously helpful. And I mentioned this one was pretty big, slowing down and analyzing. So how many of you think faster than you can type or forget what you were going to do before you actually have a chance to do it? Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, by talking it through and actually taking the time to verbalize what I'm trying to do, I have a much better chance to actually figure out what the hell I'm doing. By planning, or by slowing down and analyzing, I, I can plan better what I'm trying to accomplish. And this has been probably the best benefit of, of talking to myself. Oh, 
got water. Okay. And now with all those combined, I am improving the problem solving. Uh, all those help me be a better developer. They help me combat not remembering what I was trying to do, not knowing what I'm trying to do. Helps me figure out what my next steps are going to be. And it's been great for me. Let's talk a little bit about something that's not me. But don't worry, we'll get back to me soon enough. So a huge part of streaming is building a community. Not just developers, not just other, other people doing code or building games or applications. But people who want to learn about development, and even people who just want to support you because they like you. People who, who you happen to have met and want to join in and just be part of chat and be part of the community. It's been amazing. I started off streaming with zero community, and I have more than doubled that. I'm going to ask you to not think about the math too long. So you're thinking about it? Stop thinking about it. But I had nobody watching at first. My first development stream was like no, zero, zero views, um, which was rough. Uh, I almost didn't do a second one, but I then started going out to other people's streams, other developers, and became part of a much larger community. And now I get quite a few more. I don't know the exact numbers because I don't usually keep track of that while I'm streaming, and I'll get into that a little bit later. So in October of last year, I was laid off. And streaming actually helped me through some really hard times. Um, I was victim to the tech layoffs and could have gone down a very, 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 very dark path, as those of you who may know me may know that I'm prone to do. Um, I didn't have anything lined up. I didn't have a new job to go to. I didn't have anything directly like, okay, well, no big deal. And it was a really, really shitty severance package. So I had... A couple options here. There are two ways that I could have gone. I could have let it sh push me into a deep, deep, dark depression, or I could use my newly found free time to learn new things, especially now that I had started growing that community in place to help support me. So, you know, ordinarily, and yeah, I'm not afraid to talk about it. For those of you who know me, I mostly do mental health talks and not tech stuff or uh, things like this, but <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I have depression, take meds for it. And it, something like getting laid off initially hit me pretty hard in the depression side. So I could have let depression sink in, have absolutely no motivation, become completely broke, homeless. Well, maybe, maybe not right away, hopeless, maybe eventually hopeless or homeless. Um, or... I could take the time to learn new things, and which is what I ended up doing. When I was laid off, when I was unemployed, I'd spend the first few hours of my day looking for um, job openings, reaching out to my network, checking LinkedIn and all that. And I was trying to find you know, a new position. Uh, and after I cleared out Indeed and all the other job posting sites, submitted applications and resumes and cover letters and everything to every one there. Um, I would hop on stream and stream for eight to 10 hours at a time, all the while learning new things. Uh, and growing my network. Actually, some of the people who would hang out in my stream or whose streams I would hang out in would often say, hey, I've heard that there's an opening here. Is this something that you might be a fit for? Or, hey, I think that you should check this out. Uh, and it didn't end up landing me a job, but just having those people was a tremendous help. Another benefit to talk to myself is learning new things. You know, I mentioned that before, but even before I got laid off, I was trying to learn new things. Ordinarily, I'd just say, Hey, I'm interested. I'd like to learn it and just play Overwatch or Rocket League or some game instead. 
Um, how many? <laughs> is there anybody else who who acts like that? Maybe not act like that. Who, who who's like that? Where yes, I'm so excited to learn this new thing, but ah, uh, I don't have a reason to, and I just want to not do it because it's hard, or I have other things that I should be doing. When I stream, there is a level of accountability. And I have a reason to learn new things. Helps out a lot. I've learned quite a few things. Oh, big one. I mean, this. Learn game dev with Godot. I learned some uh, Node for stream interactions, database stuff, backend stuff. TypeScript for a chatbot that I built out. Unity because I wanted to suffer. <laughs> C sharp for some scripting and some some mainly just to learn a little bit of C sharp because it's used everywhere. There uh, there's one stream thing called Streamerbot that you can do your own effects and interactions by writing out C sharp programs and Python because I'm not sure why, but I did use Python for something. And that's not all. I also learned OBS, and if you don't know what OBS is, does anybody know what OBS is? Yeah, it's the stream software. Yeah. And if you don't, we'll talk about it a little bit later. Um, I did quite a bit of React stuff for, for interactions because with OBS you can use a browser source, which any web page can be used as a source. Uh, Blender for some animations and 3D modeling. I'm not good at it, but I can use it now. And Asaprite for pixel art, which is how I made little bouncing me here. But so, in other words, I've had reasons to learn things that I've been interested in, but never actually had a reason to use. So I found a reason to use it, started doing stuff. When you say that you learned it, like, to what level do you feel? Uh, it depends on the, the tech. I mean, I'm not a C Sharp developer by any means. I can get by for that one purpose. Um, Are you like familiar enough and then could move on to technical harder things? Like probably. Foundational kind of thing? For, for like TypeScript and React, I already had a pretty strong foundation. Sure. Um, but I found more difficult things to do, like having a connection from React to Node, going with that to a connection to Twitch API, which is Twitch chat is actually IRC completely. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's IRC. Um, oh, so that's where that went. Yeah. <laughs> so it connects to that and getting pub sub events, uh, event sub stuff, and as chat messages come, then I have it show up on my screen as yeah. React components. Um, yeah, these are all pretty big thing yeah. that you're like picking up. So I was wondering to what capacity, because Blender by itself is a huge thing. I haven't a done a ton of 3D modeling with it. I mean, I, I know how to use the tools to a, uh, a bit, but I used it more for 2D animation and stuff, for just like effects, background effects, things like that. I did play around a little bit with inverse kinematics and rigging, but that really quickly went above my head. Yeah, rigging is really hard. Uh, there is some uh, newer stuff like auto rigging that's come out, and I think there is like I, Unreal stuff. We don't talk about Unreal. Oh. <laughs> um, Do you find the inspiration to use a lot of these other kind of tools from other people's streams? Yeah. So one thing that I, the first thing that I really did on stream, uh, initially I started out doing Drupal stuff. Um, Matt Glamman, who's also talking at this time, so I appreciate you all being here instead of <laughs> punching him. Uh, he used to stream every Wednesday doing Drupal stuff. There wasn't a lot of interest. I think I, I was one of like five people watching him. And so I tried tried that, tried doing like, ask me anything, you know, let me help you out. And then I decided, you know, I want to do, why should I just do stuff that I already know? I want to learn new things. So it's kind of a rite of passage for uh, anybody who streams to make a chatbot. Oh, I thought I could jump up there. There we go. So that's why I started learning TypeScript and Node. You know, I had a foundation, but I, I've never done a whole lot of WebSocket stuff. I've never done uh, API calls to like event sub, pub sub, things like that. 
Uh, Godot. That was mainly because I well I had been laid off and there was a uh, a game jam that I was interested in. I had an idea. Uh, if you don't know, a game jam is where somebody comes up with a topic and you have a certain uh, amount of time to do it. Some of them are like as short as three hours. I saw one that's listed for ten years. I, I don't know why they put, <laughs> put that together, but um, they're any length of time give you a theme, and then you just go. So I had a theme. The theme was some assembly required. So I had an idea for a game where a little robot would run around, starting out as a head, bouncing around, trying to find the other parts of his body. So I started learning Godot and realized very quickly that there was no way I was going to learn how to do game development in the 48 hours that was left to do it. But I started picking up on it and really enjoyed it. This was about the time of the Unity fiasco. Uh, Anybody know what I'm talking about with that? So Unity is free to use, but they changed their pricing model to where developers were going to have to pay a certain percentage per download. Uh, and on the Apple Store, or the, uh, yeah, the App Store, that could add up really quickly. That's almost 50% of a indie developer's income like getting taken away when you take the Apple cut plus the Unity cut. So they kind of shot themselves in the foot. They, uh, so I decided to go with Godot because it's, it's like the Drupal of the game dev world because it is completely open source. Um, it's a very lightweight engine and it's pretty powerful. I mean, there's two huge benefits here, like from what you're doing. Like one, you're diversifying your market, right? So when you're streaming, you're hitting multiple targets of interest. Is awesome. Yeah. But then, depending on how often you stream, you almost need to like branch out and pick up things to like keep busy or interest around. So, so I have some friends. Um, yeah, I say friends in a loose term. I, if I saw them on the street, I'd know them. You know, we talk to each other, but it's not like you know I call them up. But they watch my streams. I watch their streams. I, I guess the term is parasocial relationship, but whatever. Um, one of them just started a Kickstarter for a game he's been working on for about three years now. Uh, he had a $10,000 goal. It was funded within three hours. It was wow. kind of amazing to watch. Yeah. But he does that every day. He gets on. He's like, okay, I'm working on Memori. We're, we're going to do this part. This is where I want to go. So there are a lot of people who do the same thing. They have a project. They're going to finish it out. And they do it every day. Uh, there's one streamer, Irish John Games, who's been working on a pirate game, very similar kind of to like Sid Meier's Sid um, series. He actually got Micropose as a publisher recently, so he's really thrilled about that. But indie game dev, working in Unity, it's just him. And every day, six days a week, he's, he's streaming stuff and just showing what he's doing with the game. And so that was a shorter level. So, another good thing about streaming is that, <clears throat> excuse me, accountability and productivity has improved because I talk to myself. Oh, shit. It, by streaming, saying I'm going to do something, I'm more likely to do it. It's a psychological thing. There, there's an effect name for it or something. I don't remember what it's called, but when you tell somebody that you're going to do something, when you tell others you're going to do something, you're more likely to complete it. Um, there have been studies. I can't cite them. Just trust me on this. <laughs> but uh, I think the book that I read it in was influenced by Robert Cialvini. It's something where, like, if you say, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to go to the gym, if you tell a bunch of people, then you're holding yourself accountable because, you know, when somebody comes up and says, oh, look like you're putting on more weight than you're losing. You're like, oh crap, maybe I should actually do this. And so, uh, somehow I find myself more productive when I'm streaming, and I was just as surprised by that as you might be. Uh, I think it's because I take the time to slow down and think out the problems rather than just throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. When I'm streaming, when I'm doing development, when I'm writing code, I write fewer lines of code, but those lines of code are better, less buggy, 
I have to go back and correct it less. So the net, it's a net positive for the most part. I mean, sometimes people in chat get a little out of hand, goes a little bit wonky, and you don't accomplish a whole lot. But for the most part, I, I find myself more productive. There's also the audience effect. Knowing, or for me, as the case often is, thinking that people are watching makes me want to do better. It makes people want to do better. It makes people act differently if people are watching. Uh, I'm more careful about what I say, how I write code, and how many energy drinks I chug while on camera. Less or more? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I take an ad break every hour, which is just, how many can I get down at this time? Now there's something great that happens when I'm talking to myself and sometimes people are listening. It's learning new things. Actually, I think that, that's not what I titled this one. I think I might have copied something. Um, yeah, real-time feedback is what the title should have been there. Um, usually if people are watching, they'll be helpful and they'll call out mistakes or offer help when they can. But people are just as likely to cause skill creep I made the first few slides of this on stream. I didn't want to make all of it to like spoil it for anybody who might have come here. Um, but there's a lot of, hey, you know, it'd be cool that happens. And you know, they throw out a ton of ideas. And all of them are like, yes, I want to do this. I want to do this. But I, I could either do all that and have like three or four really, really feature full slides. Or I could not do all that and have uh, 40 reasonably complete. Um, I did have a lot of great ideas that I wanted to try with this, but time is a thing. Um, and it's a loop. There's continuous learning. I've met a lot of people who are smarter than me. Uh, a lot of people who are just, it's humbling that they will stop in, help out, uh, answer questions, or like I said before, I could go into their streams and say, hey, I'm having a problem. What do you think? Can you help me out with this? And, They'll either drop everything and say, or they'll say, hey, talk to me on Discord, or you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. But everybody's really, really helpful. All right. So if you want to see how the sausage is made, let's see, get it. <laughs> uh, I can show you a little bit about what you need to do to start streaming if, if it's something that you're interested in. So it's simple to get started. It doesn't take much, according to a small time streamer myself. Um, I recommend using OBS, which is Open Broadcast Software Studio. It's free. It's very powerful. There are also different flavors of it. Uh, the big one is Streamlabs OBS, or Slobs, which has a lot of built-in integrations already. Um, but it makes it really hard to pull away from that if you want to move on. Create whatever account. Uh, if you want to do YouTube, Twitch, Kick, OnlyFans, your choice. Um, get the account, set up a couple scenes in OBS, press start, and start talking. Do what you want to. No, there, there's no wrong way. I know some people who had, uh, like my first development stream, I basically had an outline everything short of a PowerPoint that I was going to go through. And that didn't work. That was not a good format. <laughs> um, it, it, the more I did it, the more, and the more people I watched, I found that just having a real, you know, hey, I'm doing this, let's hang out, worked a lot better. I've seen it a lot where people think they need an expensive camera, expensive microphone, expensive computer, expensive GPU. You don't need an expensive anything. The, the best one you can use is the one that you already have. I've seen some very successful streamers who use their computer's built-in webcam, and people still watch them you know, in the thousands. I've also seen some people with audiences of like one or two dump thousands into their setup before they even do the first stream. You don't need to buy a thousand dollar camera 
$600 microphone, which some people have a $600 microphone. I don't know why. You, you don't need to put that money into it unless you know that it's something that you enjoy. I'll say it again. The best equipment to start with is what you already have. Do not buy new stuff. Use what you got. See if you like it. Then put some money into it if you want to, but make sure you enjoy it before you dump a lot. All right, and where did I hide that? There it is. Bonus level. Um, it's not really bonus level. It's actually the end. Um, more of a let's wrap it up. Any questions? What time is it? 1.30. Okay. Oh, that took longer than I <laughs> did the first time I ran through. All right? If there's how did you, you probably answered it, but maybe just a bit more details. How did you think of starting it? Like, what was the idea of starting streaming? Um, I wanted to do something creative. I wanted to... You know, I, I had some equipment from other stuff and I just saw other people doing it and figured, you know, this might be fun. It might be worth learning something, it might be worth helping out other people. Because I, not as active as I used to be, but like on Drupal Slack, used to do like a lot on the support channel, try to answer as many questions as I could. And I thought that, you know, if I had a stream, maybe people would come, ask questions, I'd be there to help out. I am still around to answer questions with what I can help out with. Um, but I'm not limiting myself so much to, to that one area of content. Uh, honestly, the weird thing is, I get a lot of people asking me for help on Godot, which <laughs> um, I'm not very great at, but a lot of times I can direct people to the right place to find answers or we figure it out together on stream. When you're you know, active on a stream, what what do you find yourself, you know, working on? Is it, uh, you know, the, uh, the hobby portion of it? Is it your day-to-day -day work? Um, uh, I work for a large insurance company, so I don't <laughs> do any of my day-to-day. -day. Right, right. Um, it's mostly hobby stuff, what I want to try. My goal, uh, I have ideas for a game, so I think that once, you know, everything settles down with this, uh, now that I've finished this part, I might go the route of, hey, I want to put together a game, and you know, we're going to start from point A, get the mechanics down, and build it out, see where that goes. Uh, also, occasionally, I do music. I play a saxophone on, on stream like once, twice a month, just because, and that's a lot of fun. Someday I'll actually learn how to play it, too. <laughs> you said you, you don't, uh, like, You've gone from like having a script to not having any. Do you like outline things? Do you like have you like that? I don't watch a ton of streams, but from what I've seen, like they'll often have you know like a couple things that they're gonna do kind of throughout the day. Like you said, you have your breaks and stuff. So do you have like a structure for that at all? Or is it just kind of I I have an idea of what I want to accomplish um, during a stream. Uh, I don't necessarily have it thoroughly outlined, but I'll put like um, in Excaladraw or Obsidian, I'll have a markdown checklist of sometimes, not all the time, but of like, all right, so I'm working on this, here are the mechanics that I want to, mainly it's been for this presentation, here are the mechanics I want to figure out, or I was playing a little bit with um, rigging with that little guy, and it was, it didn't turn out well, but I learned that it didn't turn out well and how to do it for other things. Um, so that was a stream of me just messing with that or figuring out how to uh, you know, do the sprite-based animation, how to put tiles in, how to do the terrain mapping so that it... You know, I didn't have to put every one of these tiles down individually. There, You can map it so that when you put out blocks of stuff, it'll automatically fill out the pattern. Um, so, so you built all of this on your streaming? 
I built the core mechanics of it, but I didn't do all the slides because I didn't want to you know, have the entire presentation available before I actually gave the presentation. Um, so I did want to do a couple credits. The game engine I used, I've said before, is Godot. Uh, all the tiles and all the things that aren't little guy here are made by uh, an artist named Kenny. And they're basically known as Pixel Art Jesus or uh, Game Asset Jesus because they put out a ton of free stuff. Um, I actually paid for the entire pack at once because I wanted to support them, but everything they put out is free. Um, and I also designed the levels and built little mini me there and did the animation on that using a sprite. So, there's no questions on um, anything then, because I used a slide theme off of Google Slides, I do want to make sure that I give the credit there, and... <laughs> I think that I have the world boundary. Nope, maybe not. <laughs> I'm going to have to go through and re <laughs> Do you find that most people uh, participate live while you're live streaming, or do you think or half or more people view it after the fact? I have my, my VODs or video on demand. I keep them up, but most people that watch are watching while I'm streaming, and uh, that, that's when people are most active and m most likely to help. Um, most of the clips and stuff I have are made by other people of me of embarrassing moments and <laughs> wanting to uh, share that with everybody. You know, when I misspeak or stumble over words or <laughs> do something ridiculous. Uh, although some of them, some of the stuff that I've done has been really, let me see where I have this. Because I don't want to. I'm wondering, like, to cultivate uh, community, do you do it like at the same time, multiple times a week, or do you keep some regularity about that, or it's just whenever it's part? I don't have a set schedule, but I do have certain days that I, I usually start around the same time. Um, I mean, there, I, I would love it if I could get to a point where it's my full time job where I can just you know quit where I'm at now and become a full time content creator, but I don't think that's in the cards. So I do it for fun, and, but to grow a community, they say that you need to have a semi-regular schedule, and you know, some people say, well, the best way to get an audience on Twitch is to not be on Twitch. Like, just spamming yourself out there on Twitter, X, whatever, um, sending out your excrement any way that you can, um, doing YouTube. I put out some really dumb shorts of just clips from my stream. Gonna see if I can. Does the amount of audience affect you in some way, or are you just there for yourself and for the accountability? Um, I do not look at my viewer count, so I talk the same as um, if I had zero viewers or a thousand. Um, I I don't look except for maybe once in a while. I'm just curious, you know, if I'm gonna go to a different channel. What if I'm wrapping up? I'll look. Yeah, okay, well. Two people, I'm not gonna do a raid, which is where you take your community to another channel. You know, we're not gonna send two people over there, but sometimes it might be a little bit more than that. Um, right now, I'm just trying to, some of the funnier. And some of the fun stuff that I've done too is creating stream effects using like all kinds of text put together. Um, so Godot, there is a way to integrate it with Twitch IRC, and I took that a step further and integrated it with OBS WebSockets, so I could do facial tracking um, from OBS stream into Godot and have like stuff bouncing off my head. Which, that was a lot of fun to Trying to find that one.
see if I can. So that is a little game that I made where uh, people in in chat can join in and you know bounce around. But you can see now I've got the cannonballs bouncing off. I've got the characters there bouncing off my face. <laughs> That's all you know integrated with Godot, with Twitch, and OBS face tracking. <laughs> There was a some real fun stuff with um, face tracking as well. That's some of my favorite. Like oh, and I think in December, Mountain Dew did a huge promotion where they're like, okay, well if you have a bottle of Mountain Dew on your stream, we'll come in. And I ended up getting like 20 subs from them or subscriptions, which you know, each one of those is a couple bucks in my pocket. And so I did some face tracking and made the creepiest thing you're going to see in a while. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I have a lot of fun doing different things. Um, just a lot, and I, it's not all productive, and if you're not having fun, don't do it. I think that that's about all I got, unless you want me to keep showing embarrassing moments. Yeah, and it was like and subscribe the Oh yeah. yeah, don't forget to um, follow, subscribe, gift gift subs to your friends, um, donate, follow me on Patreon, and <laughs> join my Discord, all that stuff. Uh, Yeah. Face tracking chaos. Hmm? Face tracking chaos. Yes. It was that one was a lot a lot of fun to figure out. And then doing let me show uh, some of the redeems that I have for, for chat to use. I, I made this one. This is one of those ones I I took the effect, um, or made the effect itself and then wrote out the scripting for it in C sharp. Oh, I trapped myself. Get out of here. Uh oh, now I'm gone. The one behind is still playing. Why? Yeah, that one doesn't stop. So yeah, that. That one putting together all the filters on top of each other. And so it's integrated so where Jack can type in a message when they redeem it and it pops up as the silent movie thing. Awesome. Alright, and that's that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you all for coming in. <laughs>